shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. Today is Monday, February 9, 2015. It's good to be home. I know you thought I was on St. Christopher Island in the Caribbean last week, but that was only my cover story. True News is located south of Florida's Space Coast, and I was invited by the Pentagon to ride on board a top-secret spacecraft that lifted off from Cape Canaveral. I was supposed to return within three days, but we had a dangerous, life-threatening crisis while orbiting the Earth. The spacecraft was struck by a meteorite, and we lost our oxygen supply and the pressure inside the cabin. I didn't know what to do because I had never been in outer space. Besides, I was merely the co-pilot. So I turned to the chief captain of the spaceship, Brian Williams from NBC News, and I asked Brian, what are we going to do? Brian was totally cool throughout the entire crisis. I was having trouble breathing as our oxygen supply was being released in outer space. So Brian gave me his oxygen tank, and he held his breath for at least five hours. Brian exited the spaceship and was attached to a tether line and walked in space The NBC News anchor reminded me of secret agent Angus MacGyver in the 1980s TV show MacGyver. Brian used chewing gum, packing tape, a clothes hanger. I don't know where he found that thing. Some clamps and a plastic egg full of silly putty to repair the oxygen tank in the tubes that had been ripped open by the meteorite. Because of Brian Williams' heroic courage, he and I were not lost in space but we safely landed at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Friday night. It's no wonder I'm only the host of True News, and Brian Williams is paid tens of millions of dollars each year to be the anchorman of the NBC nightly news program. If I had not been there in outer space with Brian, I would not have believed this story. He is truly an amazing news journalist for the New World Order, and you can believe everything he says on NBC News. Well, here's some news that NBC News won't report today. Germany's Angela Merkel and French President Hollande will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday in the Belarusian capital of Minsk. The Wall Street Journal reported that Mrs. Merkel delivered an ultimatum to the Kremlin strongman. He has until Wednesday to accept their Ukrainian peace plan or else. And the else is face new sanctions from the West. Well, it's not going over very well in Moscow. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told a Moscow radio station today, quote, nobody has ever talked to the president in the tone of an ultimatum and could not do so even if they wanted to. The Times of London reported that Mr. Putin laid the blame for the conflict in Ukraine on the doorstep of the United States and its European allies. He told an Egyptian newspaper today, quote, the Ukrainian crisis has become a high point of these negative trends. We repeatedly warned the USA and its Western allies about the harmful consequences of their interference in Ukrainian domestic affairs, but that, but they did not listen to our opinion, end of quote. The Russian leader on Saturday warned the New World Order cabal that he will not tolerate their domination of the world. He told a meeting of the Federation of Independent Trade Unions that Russia will not accept a global system dominated by one player. He said, quote, that type of world order has never been acceptable for Russia. Maybe someone else likes it and wants to live under a pseudo occupation, but we won't put up with it, end of quote. Barack Obama said today 
he is seriously considering sending lethal military weapons to Ukraine to fight Russia. In late January, several Russian bombers crossed the English Channel and approached the airspace of the United Kingdom. The bombers were carrying nuclear-armed missiles. We now know more about that incursion. Those missiles were programmed, similar to Russia's dead hand in the Ural Mountains. If Britain's Royal Air Force jet fighters had shot down the Russian bombers, the nuclear-armed missiles were programmed to automatically seek its targets and destroy them with nuclear warheads. This is a dangerous game. If Great Britain was intimidated and allowed the Russian bombers to cross into their airspace, they would have displayed a dangerous level of weakness. On the other hand, if they had defended their airspace by shooting down the Russian bombers, London would not exist today. North Korea test-fired five missiles into the sea on Sunday. This is the second such test within weeks. Also, the North Korean military has carried out at least a dozen massive biological chemical warfare drills since late 2014. The United States Air Force in South Korea is distributing to American soldiers biochem warfare suits and equipment. North Korea has enough chemical weapons to kill the entire population of South Korea. As America's enemies prepare for World War III, John Kerry, Secretary of State for the Obama Nation, is preparing to appoint a homosexual as a special U.S. diplomat to promote the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered people worldwide. America's leftists are celebrating today that the U.S. Supreme Court ordered the state of Alabama to accept same-sex marriages despite the ruling by Alabama State Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore that U.S. federal judges have no constitutional authority to order the state to accept something that is repugnant to its citizens and against the state's laws. Welcome to Babylon. America's Judgment Day is coming soon. Make sure you're right with God. Repent of your sins. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ as Savior. Be baptized in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and you shall be saved. Let's take a break. Jim Bailey will join the program when I return to discuss a prophetic dream he had about an economic collapse in America. This is True News. You're listening to True News, the end time newscast. Rick will return after this announcement. This is Max McLean. How does the prophet Isaiah describe Jesus? Listen to the Bible from Isaiah 11. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist from Isaiah 11 listen to the Bible it's great for the soul to hear more go to radiobible.org This is True News, the End Time Newscast. I'm Rick Wiles. Doc Burkhardt and I flew home from St. Christopher and Nevis last Friday night. Now, it's a three-hour flight from the islands to Miami, Florida. And then it was another three-hour drive from Miami to Vero Beach. Now, Doc is our director of radio broadcast operations. And when he started a year ago, we were on two or three uh, shortwave radio stations in in addition to the internet. Today, one year later, we're on nearly 100 radio stations and six world band shortwave stations. Doc is also responsible for our 50,000 watt radio station in St. Christopher and Nevis in the Caribbean. Plus, he is supervising the new WVRO FM 105.3 radio station that we are building this month in Vero Beach. He's doing an awesome job managing the growth that the Lord is granting to us. As Doc and I drove home on I-95 Friday night, I said to him, 
Let's tune the radio to AM 1090 and find out if True News can be heard in Florida over that station. Sure enough, there was my voice along with Doug Krieger and Chris Putnam. Now, you may be asking why I consider it a big deal. Here's why. K-O-A-Y AM 1090 is in Little Rock, Arkansas. We were north of Miami, Florida. Little Rock is nearly 1,100 miles away. AM 1090's nighttime signal stretches over a vast expanse of North America. True News is broadcast Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Mountain. So if you think about it some evening, turn on your home or car radio to AM 1090 during that hour and let us know if you can receive the station's broadcast signal. It reaches uh, north up into uh, central Canada and uh, south into the Caribbean over uh, Ho- over uh, Cuba, even down to the tip of South America. Also, uh, we changed radio stations in Dallas-Fort Worth at the beginning of 2015, and we're receiving calls, emails, and letters from folks who don't know that we are on a different station. True News is heard Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. on the powerful KKGM AM 1630. Now, while we were in St. Christopher last week, Doc and I were discussing, as usual, global news and end-time prophecies. Uh, For new listeners, I will tell you that this ministry was birthed by the Holy Spirit in 1998 through a prophetic vision about America on fire. Following the vision, the Holy Spirit expanded my understanding of it. He revealed to me in the summer of 1998 that the U.S. financial system will implode because of something called derivatives. I had never heard of derivatives in 1998. It was something dropped into my spirit by the Holy Spirit. I know much more about derivatives in 2015. I know that there is uh, approximately one quadrillion dollars worth of derivatives in the world. The uh, derivatives are basically insurance contracts on debt. One party insures another party's debt. We're talking about a quadrillion dollars worth of insured bets that others won't default on their debt. And that is a massive ticking time bomb. The other things that the Holy Spirit revealed to me in 1998 were things to come in addition to a financial meltdown. It included Islamic terror cells in the United States and Western nations, nuclear suitcase bombs, biological warfare, terrorism, cyber war, and all of it culminating in a surprise North Korea attack on one American city, an electromagnetic pulse attack that destroys America's electronics, and a Russian-Chinese invasion of American soil. It's not a pretty picture. And I've lived with this vision 24-7 for 17 years. It's what drives me. I'm very aware in 2015 that we are precariously close to the fulfillment of that 1998 vision. America has forgotten the God who made this nation great. We're going to pay a horrible price for our sin and rebellion. The world is currently in a number of historical cycles, the war cycle, the civil unrest and revolution cycle, the market crash cycle, and most likely a little ice age cycle. We're also nearing the crisis stage of the fourth turning. This is not the end of the world. It is the end of the American empire. Life will go on just like it did after the fall of the Roman empire and after the fall of every other empire throughout history. This is a massive global paradigm shift, and we just happen to be the generation that is living through it. Now, while in St. Christopher last week, the Lord reminded me of a dream that Pastor T.D. Hale was given last year. and Basically, this is what he said. He said, uh, in the dream, he saw a, a 50-pound bag of flour, 
uh, and there was a hand that was uh, turning the flour bag upside down to empty out its contents. But it wasn't flour that was coming out of the bag. It was people. And the people were falling down through the air into a big flour sifter. Now, if you're young, you probably don't know what a flour sifter is. But there was a day when you know, people actually made bread and and other baked products, and they actually had to sift the flour. Uh, and uh, it was a big old device that had a handle on it, and the flour went into the top uh, basket and... You know, mom or grandma would turn the handle and it would sift the flour and then the, the uh, fine flour would come out underneath and all the impure particles would stay in the upper chamber. And so Pastor T.D. Hell saw this hand pouring out this big flour bag into this sifter, but like I said, it wasn't flour coming out, it was people. People were falling into the flour sifter. And he said that um, um, he remembers uh, the the flour sifter, and I don't know what the why this is significant. He said it it was uh, green, and he could tell it was old because uh, paint was coming off of it. The the color was was fading, um, and he said uh, as people came out of the flour sifter, some of them just landed on their feet, dusted themselves off, and walked away perfectly unharmed, but others came out beaten, defeated, disoriented, confused, and they just lay there on the, on the ground. And he could hear the complaints of the people saying it was just too hard. Others were saying it was their fault, not mine. But then he said a, a, a loud voice shook the atmosphere saying, you had your day, you played, you laughed. Now the day of sifting has come. And I believe this dream, I believe why the Lord brought this back to my remembrance, that this dream that was given to Pastor T.D. Hell last year, is because we are deeply in this paradigm shift. The whole world is unstable right now. Everything is being shift, sifted. Everything is being sifted. There's nothing that's stable Nothing that's solid except Jesus Christ and the Word of God. And the whole world is going through this paradigm shift. And as we're going into it, into the sifter, this giant cosmic flower sifter that God is pouring the human race into right now, some of us are going to come out of it and land on our feet and brush off the dust and just walk on and life is going to be okay. Others are going to lay there on the ground confused, bewildered, beaten, defeated, not knowing what happened to them. Listen, you better make sure you're in the right position, the right standing with God before you go into the flower sifter. I've been trying for over 16 years on this radio program to get people's hearts ready for this moment. And I'm telling you right now, we're already going into the flower sifter. All right, the hand of God is turning the flower sifter right now. And you have precious little time remaining to get your life right with God, to be in right standing with Him, to develop a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But I assure you, if you're going to survive this flower sifter, Sometime through that flower sifter experience, you're either going to surrender and submit to God's will and his ways and his word, or you're going to be turned and tossed around in that flower sifter blades, and they're going to beat you black and blue, and you're going to come out of the bottom and just lay there on the ground for a long, long time, maybe decades, until you figure out what just happened. But Jim Bailey, the founder and editor of Z3news.com is on the telephone, and the Lord recently gave him a dream about the financial system. I, I read it over the weekend, and uh, I, I asked Jim to come on the program today and share it with us. Jim, glad to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Uh, Jim, T.D. Hale's dream of a flower sifter. 
he had this dream last August 2014. And, and, you know, I forgot about it. But last week, the Lord brought it back to my remembrance. Because I believe this this explains what's happening to us right now. That, that the whole human race is going into this flower sifter, particularly the United States and the Western nations, the, the, the so-called advanced nations. Everything is being turned upside down. And if, if you... If you're not right with God, this is going to be a very troubling, painful, disorienting experience. So um, I, I just felt it was um, necessary to talk about that dream from T.D. Hill before bringing you on, because it, I, I, I really believe all this is tied together. What were your thoughts as I was reading that? Well, I, I totally agree. I mean, th- there is... Uh, uh, there are warnings of economic trouble coming, and the Lord's been giving dreams and, you know, uh, enlightening his people so that they're not caught off guard. But the bigger issue is not the, the money. Um, it's the relationship, just like you were saying, the relationship with the Lord. Because everything that we need is in him. You know, I mean, we, we tend to look at our bank account, our abilities, our weaknesses, whatever, and uh, according to the scriptures and according to uh, the letters of Paul, everything is in him. It's according to his power, according to his riches, according to his greatness. And if we have, and what Paul prayed is that you, that you would have the knowledge of God, that you would know him, know his will for your life. And if you have that, you have everything, everything comes from him so that's the ticket that's the key and that's those are the ones that are going to go through the sifter and shake the dust off and keep walking because they have strength in their inner man through through a a covenant relationship with god who is the source of all strength and all blessings and all power and and all finances i mean god is the same yesterday today and tomorrow our economy can rise and fall and all kinds of things can happen, but it doesn't change the fact that he is still God, just like he was from ages past. He's not, he's not changing. So we can take refuge in him. And, uh, that's really, that's really the key. It's not, it's not the economics. It's not the finances. God will provide for his people. Amen. We have all things in Christ. We are sufficient in all things, if we are in Christ, and his word is in us. You know, uh, Jim, ever since the Y2K scare of the late 90s, a lot of people have been prepping, prepping for a future disaster. And as the world becomes more unstable, more people are uh, waking up to the reality that uh, security is not as secure as they thought it was, and they better start prepping. And that's a good thing. I'm not against prepping. But I want to be a soul prepper. A lot of people are prepping to survive a financial collapse, a collapse of social order. They're prepping by storing, um, you know, guns, ammo, uh, gold, beans, uh, you know, know, uh, bullets, beans, and bullion. And uh, Mm -hmm. so they're, they're prepping to survive a, a meltdown of society. Mm-hmm. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. You should, okay? But many of them are not prepping their souls. They're not preparing their souls for this event. And they're going into it with the mindset that they will be sufficient. They, themselves, me, mm-hmm. I will be sufficient. I will store up. I will build a barn big enough. I will dig a, a tunnel deep enough. I will hide enough stuff. And it's all I and me. And they're prepping mm-hmm. in their own strength. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they have been ignoring prepping their soul to live by faith, to trust God, to walk by his promises. When everything around you says, you're not going to survive. You're not going to eat. You're not going to have sufficient supply. 
And so that's why I'm saying we need to be soul preppers. We need to have the right relationship with God and know his word. And we're very close to the point where there's not going to be any more time to to prepare your soul. And I think that's what T.D. Hale's dream about the flower sifter is about. You know, once we start falling into the flower sifter and those beater blades are turning, you better you better be um, uh, compliant and obedient and know how to uh, get in the position that the Holy Spirit tells you inside those beater blades and roll with it and do exactly what the Lord tells you if you want to come out at the bottom and get on your feet and walk away. Exactly. So, um, anyhow, let's talk about let's talk about this uh, this dream the Lord recently gave you. Um, is 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 it connected to the previous dream that you had last year that you shared on the program? But no, actually, that dream was uh, in the future. That dream, at the beginning of that dream, I saw that we were in the, not in the next few weeks or months, but it was more into the distant future. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw America had already been through a series of severe problems and times really hard times and this was now that was that was showing the the end the final phase of the plan of the the psychopaths that are you know currently running our our government um you know, there's some that between the international uh bankers the elite and conspiring together with uh, political leaders there are there are some very bad things planned for our country but but this dream on the other hand this this one we're talking about today this is actually the first thing uh that's coming next this is this is like in the very immediate future so this is this is really kind of the kickoff or the big kickoff to uh what's going to be a series of trouble jim what 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 was it about the dream that made you have an awareness that that this dream is up close, that the fulfillment is is in the near future? Well, he gave it to me. I had the dream on, on 7 seven fourteen, which I thought that date was significant. But, but anyway, when I had the dream, I, at first I thought, because um, the, the dream, the, as you'll see, the, uh, the context of the dream, it, it has like an, an urgency to the warning that if you're not, positioned right it's going to be too late you got you know so i thought for sure the lord must be saying this is going to happen in the next few weeks well after after weeks went by and it didn't happen i went back and sought the lord and said okay (laughs) obviously i was wrong on the what i thought the timing of this thing was so when what is it what's what's the timing and and what i heard him say was it's going to happen next year which this was in 2014, so he's talking about 2015. He says it's going to happen next year at a time when American, the American people, uh, at a time when tensions have increased between the American people. So that's kind of the signs of the times. And he didn't tell me what specifically that would be. And there's already been an increased tensions, you know, uh, over recent years, but. I think we're going to see some events trigger increased tensions. And, it, you know, I, I, Rick Joyner has shared a dream he had about uh, terrorist attacks within the United States. Mm-hmm. We know our southern border is wide open to that. Uh, we know the uh, majority of the people coming across the border are OTMs other than Mexicans. They're Middle Easterners. So there's all kind of evidence that there's trouble coming. And I don't know what that trigger event will be, but that that seems like that could be uh, what it is. It could be, I thought, other things it could be is uh, maybe the war starts in the Ukraine or in the Middle East, and Americans are divided against each other over how we handle that. But something's going to happen to trigger tensions. And in that time frame is when this event happens. And it All right, Jim, let me clarify this. I want to make sure I'm understanding it. Okay, so I I realize you had this dream July 7, 2014. The Holy Spirit told you it's going to happen next year. So this is 
2015. And he said it would happen when the tensions have increased between the American people. Was he saying tensions between the American people as a population inside the country or tensions between the American people and other nations? I think what he, what, what he told me was between Americans, but I believe both because the, con- the context of the dream, uh, you see um, tensions are increasing significantly between um, America and other nations. So I think both are true. Mm-hmm. Okay, because uh, you know I've, I've said since 2007, 2008, Barack Obama will drive America to civil war. Exactly. And th- I have never in my lifetime seen this country so deeply divided there there are two different nations living inside the same territory there's the old america and there's the new babylon they're, they're completely different on everything every topic every subject every value two different nations living inside the same borders and, and i think that trend is going to continue you're going to see a, a, a clearer uh delineation between the light and the dark. Okay, now Jim, in, in the in the intro, I mentioned the various cycles, and we're in the war cycle, which means historically, the world is ripe for a uh, a blockbuster war. I mean, one that that is a game changer, changes, goes down in the history books, a big one. Okay, a, a world war, a major regional war, something that that really rocks the world. We're also in the civil unrest and revolution cycle, which means that over the next five or six years, whatever, there is a high probability of civil unrest, social unrest, and revolutions, not just in one country, but worldwide, multiple countries. Um, I'll give you examples of it. I mean, right now, I mean, we've already seen the the Scots tried to to, uh, break away from uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, there's a separatist movement uh, very strong right now in Spain. Um, you know, the Western United States is, you know, they would love to break away from Washington. Um, I, you know, you've got uh, you've got the Ukrainian revolution. That's really what's going on there. That's a revolution inside Ukraine. You've got a Western faction and a Russian faction battling each other. And, and so we're in this civil war revolution cycle. And here's the the odd thing. The Civil War revolution cycle has not overlapped the war cycle since the 1770s, Mm. which produced the American Revolution and the Revolutionary War and the French Revolution. So there hasn't been an an overlap for, you know, since the 1770s. So it's a historical time. So I understand when the Lord's telling you the tensions will increase because we're in a time of of these cycles. And the cycles are telling us there's going to be revolution, civil unrest, and war. So well, also, if you look in Revelation chapter 6, the Apostle John gave us a sequential list of the events leading up to uh, the Great Tribulation uh, and the return of the Lord. But it began, when the first seal is broken, the rider on the white horse is, uh, receives a crown and goes forth conquering and to conquer, which right there, uh, that's going to cause uh, tensions and, and wars. Um, the, but the second seal, when the second seal is broken, peace is taken from the earth and war. Uh, there's war in the earth. That's what I believe we are there right now. I believe the first seal has already been broken, and the second seal is next. And uh, so in the context of America, we're looking at uh, economic trouble weakening the nation as a prelude to war. So... And also, and and, 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 and Matthew 24, you know, Jesus said there will be, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's what we're hearing right now. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's not a day that doesn't go by that we're not hearing or reading about a war or a rumor of a war. But he said, 
See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And then here's the here's the revolution and civil unrest cycle. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Mm-hmm. It's taking place right now. It's actually tribe against tribe. Ethnic group against ethnic group. And it's happening all over the world. Yeah. The tensions are increasing. So yeah. what else happened in this dream? Well, when the dream begins, I'm in a banquet hall, a huge banquet hall that's filled with um, um, the nations of the world. There's representatives from each nation, and each nation has their own table with a dozen or so representatives seated at, at their table. And there's a lot of commotion, um, uh, yelling, um, back and forth. And in the midst of that, I see the U.S. table, but I'm not allowed to see the whole table. It's a long table, and I, I can only see uh, the representatives on one side. And suddenly they all at the same time stand up. And when they do, the commotion level in the hall just increases significantly as, as people from other nations yell, telling them to sit down. But they won't sit down. They just stand there. I'm never allowed to see who's on the other side of our table. Um, that was never shown to me. But suddenly what happens is the people on that side of the table shove the table really hard right into those who are standing uh, across from them, and the table crashes down on top of them. They're pinned with their backs on the floor. They're pinned with the table, uh, the edge of the table just resting on top of them, and they're completely helpless. They can't do anything to get it off. Nobody comes to help them. They're just stuck there. The, The world shoved the table against and on top of the U.S., representatives correct well the people who shoved the table were seated at the u.s table oh so so, oh that's now that's really each nation had their own table and this is the u.s table and i could only see half of the of of our table the people that seated on one side okay so never was allowed to see who it was but whoever it was um they shoved the table into those who are standing and and knocked them over all right so So the U.S. table, you could see the people seated on one side of the table. You could never see who the people were on the other side of the table. The people from the U.S. that you could see stood up. The world was telling them to sit down and shut up. But the shoving came from the U.S. people at the table. that You could not see their identity. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Somebody behind the scenes, somebody... The shadow government. Hidden. That's the shadow government. Uh, that's the exactly. Illuminati... That's, what I that's, believe it that's is. the Illuminati shadow government. That, that's exactly... I believe, I believe what it's telling us is the event that we're seeing is an orchestrated event. It's not an accident. It's somebody intentionally shoved that table at a time of their choosing and, and knocked those guys down... And immediately when that happened, total pandemonium breaks out throughout the whole hall. I mean, just chaos. Everybody's yelling, and um, the representatives that I see across the hall, a table of representatives from China, and they all stand up, and they're yelling at the United States, and they say, this is outrageous. We will declare war. And they turn around, and they all stomp out of the hall. Because the Chinese realized that the Illuminati shadow government behind the scenes running America was willing to take the world to the brink of world war in order to maintain control. I I think that's exactly right. So it wasn't China or Russia trying to bring down the United States, it's the shadow government that says, we're not going to let go. We're not going to, we're not going to relinquish our power and grip on the United States of America. We're willing 
to shove you guys up against the wall, shove the elected American government leaders, shove them up against the wall and say, we're going to maintain control. And the world, China, is shocked, stunned that these people are willing to play such hardball against their own nation. That's the way I'm seeing it. Yeah. And and they they they, they yell that we will declare war. I didn't I'm not saying that that's, that they're going to declare war, but they're going to threaten it. And that actually has happened already. They have they there have been some incidents uh in 2014 where uh China was very unhappy with actions taken by our military and our uh, sending ships into the South China Sea, and they actually threatened and, and, and made comments where they were, um, you know, letting us know that this could lead to war. Um, you know, Jim, and just uh, over the weekend, uh, Vladimir Putin, you know, told uh, Angela Merkel and uh, President Hollande of France, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm paraphrasing him. He, he said, I'm not going to tolerate... Uh, the new world order cabal's schemes to to contain Russia. Uh, we're not going to put up with it. And, he, and those were his words. We're not going to put up with it. Yeah. And so he was sending a message over the weekend. Don't push me. D- don't push me into a corner because I'm not going to take it. Yeah. And the Western news media is so on board with uh, our government's agenda that Throughout the Western uh, countries, the news media portrays the the narrative is exactly the opposite of what I believe the Lord is showing, and and they're trying to villainize Russia, especially Russia and Putin, um, and and act like we have to take action because he's trying to take over the world. When all along, it's not him. I mean, I'm not. I'm not defending Putin. I'm not defending Russia, but but we're we're giving ourselves a free pass, acting like we're doing nothing wrong. There's evidence in the Ukraine. It was the United States State Department who was right there. There's a recorded phone call between uh, what's what's her name, Valerie um, Valerie Jarrett. The, no, no, the um, the, the Assistant Secretary Victoria State, Newland. Victoria Newland, not yes. Valerie. Victoria mm-hmm. Newland was recorded in a phone conversation talking to the U.S. ambassador to the Ukraine, um, saying exactly what their plans were. Uh, well, well, Jim, look, look at the story that came Pouring out. Look at the story that came out last. That small little country to manipulate uh, and overthrow an elected government. That's right. So, I mean, there's all kind of stuff that the United States government is guilty of doing. And the news media gives us a complete free pass and then villainizes Putin as the bad guy. And it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. There needs to be another side to the story told. And, the, and these, these shadow figures need to be exposed, you know, for what they're doing. Last week, the Washington Times reported that there were now documents, uh, evidence, which confirmed what I said throughout the whole Libyan war. Uh, episode that all of the charges against Gaddafi in Libya were bogus, that they made up a story to justify attacking Libya and killing Gaddafi. I, I'm certainly no friend or defender of Gaddafi, but, you know, <laughs> they, they, I mean, what they did there was, was criminal. And uh, okay. the Washington Times reported last week that Hillary Clinton and the State Department and the Obama administration flat out lied about Libya and the Pentagon was so alarmed and shocked by the lies that they sent a secret delegation to Gaddafi to to warn him that he was being set up yeah yeah our government has changed sides i mean we at one point we were uh supposedly fighting the the bad guys the al qaeda we're now training, funding, and, and these things have gone on in the past too. But but we're, we've we've completely changed sides, and there's not been a word spoken about it. I mean, we're 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 the ones causing trouble throughout the world, especially throughout the Middle East. But 
also in the Ukraine. I mean, I hate to say it because I grew up being so pro-American and thinking we could do no wrong, and um, things have changed. There's the a shadow government. government. It's the shadow government. That's who you saw in the dream. It's the shadow government that's doing these things, controlling the elected constitutional government. There is a secret shadow government. And, yeah. um, hey, listen, if you, you know, if you really want to know what's happening truthfully in the news, just, just ask Brian Williams. <laughs> I mean, he'll tell you the truth. The big yeah, man, well, the big man the- at NBC, you know, he'll tell you the truth. Um, so let's get back to your dreams. So China was yelling at the U.S., we will declare war. What happened next? Okay, they stomp out of the hall, and then the scene changes. And I see um, an ETF that's called, its, it's symbol is FAZ. Um, it's an inverse ETF. It shoots like a skyrocket. It just goes straight up and um tell our audience what this is faz is an exchange traded fund that you can purchase just like you would a stock as long as your broker um brokerage firm allows trading in etfs which Mm -hmm. most of them do Mm -hmm. now they're traded just like stocks but this one it's not a company it's an index that's tied to the financial sector and what it does is it moves three times as fast as the financial sector in the opposite direction. So if the financial sector uh, goes down by 1%, FAZ goes up by 3%. It always moves exactly the opposite three times as fast. So if it goes, if the stock market was to go down 10%, FAZ is going to go up 30%. And, um, I saw this stock, this uh, this ETF, just skyrocket, and then I see myself with, talking to my wife, and we, at, in this dream, we did not own any of this particular ETF, so I was frustrated because I was aware of, of this thing and thought it could be a good thing, but I, I didn't own it, and so I, I try to call my brokerage firm in the dream, and the line's busy, you can't get through. And there was, it was too late. Um, unless you were in on it before this thing started, um, it was too late. And, and I, I really believe that the, the fact that I couldn't get through, I think there's going to be disruptions in the market caused by this event. It, it could even, the markets could be temporarily shut down um, like they were in 2001 after 9-11. Um, something's going to happen. Um, anyway... While my wife and I are standing there talking about this, kind of a weird thing happened in the dream. I see this. There's a young black man standing next to us in our house. I had never seen this guy before, um, but he had kind of a unique look because he wore glasses that had the frames of the glasses were rectangularly shaped, and he just stands there kind of looking down at the ground and swaying back and forth and has kind of a little smile on his face, never says a word. I had no clue. What the heck is that? Um, so uh, that was that was the end of the dream. Um, but a, a, week, a week later, on July 14th, I just happened to be watching the worship uh, session um, on God TV, which was being broadcasted from IHOP. And there on the screen, only for about 30 seconds, was this guy I'd never seen before. It was that black guy. He's at the keyboard. He's looking down. He's kind of uh, swaying back and forth, just like he was, has a little smile on his face, has the rectangular glasses, the same guy. But it was, he was there, I believe the Lord put him there as a marker to say, you know, this dream is not from your imagination. I'm going to show you a marker that that you have no way of of dreaming up. Um, but here's the guy, and uh, and it's just a confirmation, just a confirmation that only God could have put these things in my in my dream. All right. So um, 
to summarize all this, where where do you think we are right now, February 2015? I think we are very close. Um, he, he didn't tell me the month, but he gave me the year 2015. But my opinion is that we're very close and that we're going to see some things um, very soon. Um, and also when this happens, I, he gave me another dream where I was a um, – I was trading in the Forex market, and I was trading the dollar against the Swiss franc. And in this dream, I see the dollar just go straight down. And, um, and I was on the buy side, so it was like a nightmare. And I'm, trying, I'm looking at this, and I'm just like gripped, thinking, ah, no. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't seem to – my hands were like fastened to the desk. I couldn't seem to, to move. I just watched it go down, down, down. I believe what he was showing me is going to happen at the same time that this event happens. It's going to, you know, that's typically what happens anyway is when, when the stock market takes a dive, or to say it another way, when, when this ETF, FAZ, shoots up, it only does that when the, when the financial sector nosedives, um, which means the stock market is going to take a big tumble and typically when that happens, the dollar is hurt, too. And uh, I believe that's what we're going to see. Um, Maurice Scalar had a vision a few years ago. He, saw, he said he saw before the dollar collapses, it's going to come an event that's going to cause the dollar to lose 30% of its value. And I believe that's what's about to happen. And I, I, I've heard you talk about the fact that, you know, maybe the dollar is going to just be strong and then, bam, there it goes. And I believe that's kind of what's going to happen is, you know, right now the dollar is super strong and has been since last April, but um, it's, it's about to take a big tumble. But this is not the collapse of the dollar, and this is not the collapse of the euro. Um, and I know that because in that dream I saw the Swiss franc was um, – it, the dollar was tumbling against the Swiss franc, so the Swiss franc was still good. Um, but the Lord has shown me back in 2011, the Swiss franc is going to collapse uh, when the euro collapses. So those events are still coming after this, and then comes a season where the dollar, they're trying to prop it up and trying to resuscitate it, but they're not able to, and eventually the dollar collapses. So we've got a series of things lined up here that really begin with uh, with this this next event. Jim, I've been warning for years, 2015. I, I, and I'm, I'm just basing this, you know, I don't have a prophetic word. I, I'm just, my inner being has felt and believed for several years that 2015 would be the year of a massive financial crisis. And so here we are, we're in the year right now. We're we're I, we're now months away, because you can't say years away now. We're we're months, and we could see the first major crisis in April. Uh, America's first bond market crash, America's first financial panic was in April of 1797, mm. and uh, you know a second one. We may see a one-two punch this year, April, and everybody thinking this is the big event. No. If there is one in April, it's the precursor to what is coming in the fall. Yeah. Well, in between those two is the collapse of the euro. And uh, I, I know that because the Lord showed me in 2011, that's what coming. He, he gave me a word. He said, the, he said, dollar, Swiss franc, silver, gold. And he was showing me what he's saying is there's coming a collapse of the euro that's going to also take down the Swiss franc. And at that point, you want to be on the buy side of the dollar because the Swiss franc is going to go down to, to zero. Um, but then to the next crash after that, he said silver, gold. At that point, there's no stocks, there's no ETFs, there's, there's no uh, currency trade. It's, it's all about holding real assets. So you take the, the, the profits that you, or, you know, the, the, the wealth that you have before that and, and uh, you convert it to silver as much as you can. 
And it, it, if you can't get silver, you get gold. Silver is going to go up more than gold. And that's the way he put it to me. The dollar, buy the dollar against the Swiss franc, buy, buy silver um, over gold. Because the, the increase... The increase in the value of silver will, will exceed the increase in the price of gold. Yes. Yes. And and only real assets that you hold in your possession will, will have value because we're going to have a meltdown. The dollar is going to be – I'm not talking about the events caused in this dream. We're talking about uh, later the dollar is going to collapse completely. And the stock market, you're, 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 you're going to have to have real assets or you don't have, you know, just like right now you have the derivatives market, everybody's holding on to paper that really ha- it, it has no real value. There's no value in a, a piece of paper insuring debt. All of that's going to, deri- like you, you've been saying, the derivatives market is going to collapse. And at that point, it's, the only thing that matters is what what real assets do you have? Uh, the, so. the amount of global debt did not go down after 2008. It skyrocketed. It's at exactly. an all-time level. Exactly. And so the problem is worse today than it was in 2008. Exactly. In fact, I just wrote a post yesterday called Seven Signs of Economic Trouble Ahead, where I listed seven reasons why uh, – our our economic condition is far worse today than it's ever been. We're, these are unprecedented things that are happening. The debt levels across the world have skyrocketed, not just the United States. You look at every major country throughout the world, in Europe, Japan, um, debt levels have gone up every single year since the collapse of the housing market in 2008. That's right. And, and there's no end in sight to it. Yet the, the news media wants to celebrate the recovery, and they're only concerned with who should get credit for the recovery and ignoring the, the huge elephant in the room, monstrous debt, not only in the financial markets, but the, the sovereign governments. Who's going to bail them out when, when they go, go under? The Martians. When they default. We're going we're gonna to get a bailout from the Martians. <laughs> There's nobody on the planet that has enough money to bail out everyone. So there has no. to be a total reset of the entire exactly. global system. When, when, when the smoke clears and the dust settles, the landscape of the planet will be different. This will be a global paradigm shift. We're, we will be in a new world order. There will be a yeah. new uh, system that arises from the ashes. The phoenix will rise. Got to run, Jim. Thank you so much. Uh, Jim Bailey, uh, founder and editor of Z3News.com. Thank you for having me. I'm going to close the program with Isaiah 3. For Jerusalem has stumbled and Judah has fallen because their speech and their deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. For the look on their faces bears witness against them. They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them. For they have brought evil on themselves. Tell the righteous, it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. But woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with them. For their hands have dealt out what shall be done to them. I'm Rick Wiles. You've been listening to True News. Trust in the Lord. He shall protect his people. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.